And now, the race is on. Racing Chemicals Rates of Reactions at number 19. Chemical reactions are all about collisions between particles, and the rate of reaction depends on how frequently particles collide and with how much energy. There are four methods of increasing the rate of reaction. My mate Professor Seller is going to talk me through them. First up, concentration. What we're going to do is we're going to set up these three reactions. This one's going to be the high concentration one. You can see there's, there's more stuff in it. We're going to put medium one, and then finally, we're going to have a low concentration one down at the other side. And this is going to be like a race. We're going to start them off, and when we get to the end of the race, the solution's going to turn blue. Are you ready? Yeah. Steady? Go. And now, let's just mix them up. The reaction taking place in the beaker finishes with the sudden release of iodine, which interacts with the starch that is already present to turn the solution blue almost instantly. We have the reaction going, and what we're doing is we're waiting for those racers to get to the end. Firm favourite is high concentration. Also in the running is medium concentration. Bringing up the rear is low concentration. <gasps> Whoa, there went the first. As expected, the firm favourite, high concentration, comes storming through the finish line. Now what about this one? Kind of wondering whether that one's going to go. That's the... Oh, what? There went the second one. The runners are coming in exactly <laughs> in the order that we're expecting. And that one, he's been out of training. I wouldn't something. bet on that guy. That's not... Ooh, oh, there he went. Of the three solutions that were added, it was the solution with the highest concentration that resulted in the quickest reaction. Because the reactant's particles are more crowded, collisions take place more frequently. So that was concentration. Now onto temperature. When the temperature is increased, the particles in the solution move more quickly. This causes an increase in the frequency of collisions and the energy with which they hit each other. We're going to see how temperature affects the rate of reaction. We're going to do that by using a glow stick, which reacts when we break it. Now let's see what would happen if you were to cool it down. So as you can see, the reaction gives off light. This isn't given off light, so the reaction appears to have slowed down. If we cool it down and the reaction slows down, what happens if we heat it up? Well, let's give it a go. A bit of friction to heat it up. And as we warm up the solution, what happens to the reaction? Well, it started to give off light again, even more light than that. And because it's now got warmer, the reaction has sped up. So we can say that increasing temperature speeds up a reaction and decreasing the temperature slows down a reaction. So stick it in your freezer if you want to keep it for tomorrow to have more raven. Right, I'm off. Next up are catalysts. They work by speeding up a reaction and they do this by increasing the number of successful collisions between particles. Back to Professor Seller and his great experiments. Here we have hydrogen peroxide, and I'm going to add a little bit of a solid catalyst. This is manganese dioxide, tiny bit. Can you see that the tiny little flecks of manganese dioxide are actually causing the reaction? They're causing the hydrogen peroxide to decompose to oxygen and water. So they're reacting and remaining unchanged now. Absolutely. Now, it's interesting that on this side, we've got the same hydrogen peroxide, but without the catalyst. Yeah. And actually, it decomposes very, very slowly. Even if you leave it in the fridge, eventually it'll go off. Yeah. Let's not mess around. Let's give it a real low to catalyst to see what... Do I have to step back for this? Well, you'll see. <laughs> go. It's actually gotten so hot that it's boiling, and you can see a plume of water vapor which accompanies the oxygen as it comes out. The catalyst is causing the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen at a phenomenal rate. But the catalyst has not changed at all throughout this reaction. The catalyst is still there. We could pour this all off, we could filter it away, and we would collect all of that black stuff. That's our catalyst. And finally, the size of particles. How does that affect the rate of reaction? Let's burn this lump of sugar. a bit as it burns the sugar is turned into carbon dioxide and water what about if we decrease the particle size using something like icing sugar using a smaller particle size increases the surface area 
We've used the same amount of sugar as is in this cube, and we've put it into this tube. Now, let's see what happens when you try and burn it this time. There was a lot more reacting going on, and a lot more heat. I could even feel it coming off. So by breaking down the sugar into a powder, its surface area increased. More of the sugar has been exposed to the oxygen in the atmosphere, so collisions can take place more frequently. Decreasing the size of the particle increases the rate of reaction, and that's because we have increased the surface area. So let's recap. To increase the rate of a reaction, the concentration needs to increase, or the temperature needs to increase, or the size of particles needs to decrease. And the other way to increase the rate of reaction is to use a catalyst.